Hello everyone and welcome back. Well today is a great day. We have a brand new box, a brand new project on the bench. Let's get started. Before we begin building, let's do a little bit of background reference here. So the base vehicle is the Lancia 3RO, which is a heavy five-cylinder diesel built between 1938 and 1947. Very robust and reliable vehicle that saw service throughout the war, with first the Italian forces and then after Italy surrendered in 1943, the Germans incorporated them into their own forces. The lethal part of this project is the Italian design Canon 9053 or 90mm cannon. And this began production in 1939, intended as both a static emplacement gun and total artillery piece. 57 of these guns, however, were mounted on the heavy Lancia truck and designated Auto Canani di 9053. Sorry guys, I'm butchering the Italian. The effectiveness of the cannon itself is highly comparable to the German 88. It had a slightly higher muzzle velocity and a slightly longer range but a little bit less sophisticated fire control system. Combined, the Lancia, along with the 90mm gun, proved to be a highly effective mobile gun platform. I found a little bit of newsreel footage of this gun in action, so let's take a look. This is my first experience with an IBG kit, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the contents are and how it builds up. We'll do the famous unboxing scene here at the beginning of every project. Look inside the box, we see some gray plastic in the little plastic bags, and everything looks good and in place. We have our instructions, we have some decals, we have a little bit of photo etch, which might be handy and nice, we'll see. And getting to the bottom of the box here, We'll pull out the instructions and see what we've got ahead of us. Um, the diagrams look fairly clear and laid out nicely. It looks like we start with the chassis, which is fairly typical, and builds up from there. I did not order any extra parts or any aftermarket parts for this kit, so this will be more or less a from out of the box type of a build. If there are areas where I feel like we can add a little bit of here and there, I'll do that with a little bit of scratch or improvements along the way or anything I see that's missing, I'll try to add that. But I think it looks like a fairly straightforward build. I don't see any complications, it doesn't look too tricky. And we've got some color schemes in the back and those are focused on North Africa. So like I said, it's gonna be basically out of the box. So I'm just following the instructions as they're laid out. It begins with the wheels and tires and everything looks really nice and crisp from what I've been able to tell, including this really nice Pirelli emblems on the side of the uh, sidewalls of the tire, so that's really nice, nice detail. Continue just cutting parts. At this stage, there's not a lot going on here, but I think it's gonna start coming together fairly quickly, looking ahead in the instructions. The main chassis went together without any problems. It's fairly typical construction, and now I'm just starting to get a little bit of a hold onto the transmission and the engine area of the model and everything seems to fit in place. I would say one thing that's a little bit different is there's not a lot of real positive locator points, but there are little indentations, I guess is what you would call them. So there are location indications, <laughs> location points or whatever, but they're not real positive. So you just kind of have to just make sure you're lined up nicely before you do a little bit of dry fitting before you're secure with a little bit of glue. One area that I decided that I'm going to change up a little bit is Photo Etch includes these very thin little wires. You can barely see actually the wires on the screen here. And those are to replicate various drive cables and brake cables and things like that under the model. And as near as I can tell, I'm going to end up breaking or bending those off as I build the model. So I'm going to replace those with a little bit of easy line to stretch there. It's about the same diameter. And even though I had a fiddly time trying to get this to get installed in there, I think in the end, this will be a lot more durable and will still have the same nice appearance that I'm looking for. I thought the construction would go along fairly quickly just looking at the layout of the instructions, and it does. And I've decided to keep this model in components rather than build everything together because the instructions have you installing the front of the cab right away at this point. But I want to be able to paint the interior, put the seats in, things like that. So I want to leave those accessible for later on. But I've got all the doors, the seats, everything's ready to go. I've got my pile of wheels and tires sitting here at the ready. So now it looks like it's time to start moving on to the rear bed of the vehicle itself. 
One of the first things we start working on is the cargo bed. I think that holds some shells, some ready shells. One area that I'm gonna improve a little bit is that for handles, they just have these little plastic nubs sitting there. So I'm just gonna take those off and those are gonna be replaced with a little bit of brass wire. And I don't know about you, but when I replace plastic parts like this, I've always had a struggle with getting that little excess bit of plastic off getting the area smooth. I've got this little chisel now, and I gotta say, that's really handy. The last little thing I need to do with these is just remove some of that excess plastic that I couldn't get with the chisel. And because I have the raised details on these parts, I can't just take a sanding stick or sandpaper across the surface, but I have found that these fiberglass pens work really well for getting into those corners and getting that plastic off and smoothing out the surface without destroying any of the surface details. I then just bend up a little bit of wire here. This is 20 thousandths wire, 0.20, using one of the smaller teeth on my photo etch bending tool. And that's because I'm using this bending tool because my handle bending tool doesn't have a gauge that's narrow enough for this particular project. And then it's just a matter of drilling some holes into the plastic. And here I can just use kind of the ghost outline of the pre-existing part, the kit part where I removed it. You can still see a little bit of outline and use that as the guide as to where to drill the holes. And then always a nice trick is to make sure that they're all nice and level and even. I just have a little strip of evergreen plastic in there just to the right height. And I just press down on that and that just makes everything nice and square. And I'll make all the handles the same height. As I mentioned, I didn't use any aftermarket parts. So I'm wor working with the kit barrel here. And it's a two-part barrel, half and half. And anybody who's done this knows it's, it's not impossible to get a good fit. But you just got to kind of take your time little glue down the seams, and then a lot of time just kind of pressing and making sure everything's lined up. In terms of quality of the IBG kit, it's really, really nice. And I wanted to point this out. On this elevation mechanism, these guide teeth, oftentimes there's a seam line running right down through the middle of those that has to be cleaned up. And both of these are perfectly clean. There's no seam line at all that needs to be dealt with. That's very nice. Again, just following the instructions, the next step have you moving to the rear gun deck. You might have noticed from the photographs at the beginning of the video that the gun platform has two stations. That is, it's got a transit position where the sides are all folded up, and then it has a firing station where all the sides are folded down on the platform. The kit does allow you to build the model in either position, either the travel or the firing position. I'm gonna go ahead and do mine in the firing position, so those will be in the lowered position. And I have to say, as this comes together, I'm really enjoying this kind of rounded, rounded gun platform. It's a little bit unusual. The gun is just installed temporarily, it's just sitting in its location point here. And again, a lot of the components completed, but they're not installed, they're not glued together yet because I want to make sure that I have some ease of painting, especially some of those interior areas in the next episode. Well, let me start wrapping up with a few final thoughts. First, as I've mentioned, this is my first experience with the IBG model, and I have to say it's a really nice experience. The model went together very, very well. The parts are detailed and crisp and nice. Looking through their catalog, they have a lot of subjects that are really off the mainstream, and I appreciate that a lot. So in closing, the next video will start on the painting process. If you do like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button, and there is a bell down there as well, which you can hit, and it'll notify you when new videos are released. For those of you who'd like to support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon page. The link for that is below. Patreon members, well, they enjoy early viewing of these videos before release, special videos showing different techniques in a more longer form, casual nature, photographs of the ongoing projects, and of course, we have a chat room that's always open for questions and comments. The next chapter will be all about painting and a little bit of weathering. So until then, thank you very much and happy modeling. Take care, guys.